overlooking at the entrance to Fogwell's Gym on New York's Lower West Side. It is here that our story begins, a story different from any you have read before. In a dingy room above the gym, four men play a game of poker, little dreaming of the shock which awaits them. Come on, Porky. We haven't got all day. The fixer may be here soon. Keep your shirt on, Sam. I don't rush for anyone. Who do you think you're kidding? You know when the fixer snaps his fingers, we all hop if we want to stay healthy. <sighs> Sam's right. Anyhow, I'm bushed. Let's knock off for a while until... Hey, what's that noise? For the love of Pete, what do you call that? You're in the wrong place, Buster. We don't use costume wrestlers here. I've seen nutty get-ups, but that one takes the cake. But look at his build. Hang around, fella. Maybe the fixer can use you. Hey, that guy's here looking for trouble. The fixer won't like that. I intend to do just that. When I'm through with the fixer, he'll never be able to use anyone ever again. Must be some kind of nut. Toss the costume clown out on his ear, Porky. It'll be a pleasure, boys. I can use the exercise. Hey, what the? If it's exercise you want, Fatso, you've come to the right guy. Stop! Cut it out! Let go! I'll be glad to, little chum. There, is that what you wanted? Mister, you just bought yourself a big pack of trouble. Where do I grab that gun? Sorry, playmate. You'll have to move lots faster than that. If you're grabbing a gun, I guess I can use a simple little billy club. There. No sense wasting expensive bullets on a nobody like me. You punk. I'll fix it so you never make another wife crack again. Bite your tongue, Porky. Think what a loss that would be to the world. Stop wasting your time, Porky. I'll take care of that crumb my way. Don't bet on it, pal. Surround it. You can't stand all of us at once. Now's our chance while he's catching his breath. Get him! You fellas sure have a funny way of making a stranger feel at home. In fact, if I didn't know better... I begin to suspect that I'm not really welcome here. Okay, mister, we've had it. Now who are you and what do you want? It ain't possible. Nobody can fight like that. You must do it with mirrors. Now that playtime's over, I'll hang around until I find the fixer. As for who I am, you can just call me Daredevil. The year is 1950, as the prize fighter known as Battling Murdoch talks to his eight-year-old son, Matthew. But I don't want to study now, Dad. Why can't I go out and play ball with the kids? I can study later on. No, Matt. You'll do it now. You'll study every chance you get, here. I promised your mother before she died that I wouldn't let you grow up to be an uneducated pug like me. You're going to amount to something, Matt. But I want to be like you, Dad. I'm proud of you. You're the greatest. Don't say it, boy. I'm past my prime. I have no future. Nothing I can do but become a punching bag for younger men. But I won't let that happen to you. You're going to study, become a lawyer or a doctor. You'll be somebody. There's somebody that I can never be. Now go back to your room, son, and get busy with your books. Okay, Dad. As the years roll by, Matt Murdock does his best to live up to his father's dream. He becomes top student in his class, forsaking all sports, all athletic activities, although his heart aches for the thrills of the baseball diamond and the gridiron. If only Dad would let me try out for the team, I'd be as good as any of them. I just know I would. But I can't go against his wishes. I can't defy Dad after all he's done for me. After all his sacrifices, I've got to be the son he wants me to be. And so, young Matt Murdock goes his lonely way, spending every minute he can spare with his books, never sharing in the games of the other teenagers. The kids are Indian wrestling. 
If only I could go down and join them. No one can be as cruel as an unthinking youth. It is only a matter of time before the neighborhood kids make up a nickname for Matt, a name he will long remember. Well, well, if it ain't old Daredevil himself. Hi, Daredevil, be sure you don't tie yourself out turning all those heavy pages in your school books. They're laughing at me. They think I'm a sissy. Then, when he reaches his room... Someday I'll show them. I'll make them eat those words. I'm as strong as any of them, as rugged as any of them. And I'll prove it. Someday I'll prove it. His anger boiling within him, the resentful youth strikes out at his dad's punching bag with the pent-up fury of a thunderclap. The day will come when no one will ever laugh at me again. When, uh, hey, I, I knocked the bag clean off. Then, after repairing the clasp... What a numbskull I am. Why don't I do this every day, just to keep in shape? It is only natural that the son of battling Murdoch should take to vigorous training the way a duck takes to water. And so, in the months that follow, while his dad is out of town on the boxing circuit, barbells, rope skipping, cable pull, the bag, rowing machine, the bike. But no matter how hard he trains, the determined teenager never forgets the goal he has set for himself. How were things at school while I was away, Matt? Everything all right, son? Guess so, Dad, if you call straight A's all right. Matt, I know how tough it's been for you while the other kids were out playing and having good times, but the day will come when you'll thank me, boy. You're going to amount to something, just the way your mother would have wanted you. But there is one problem which battling Murdoch keeps from his son. I haven't been able to land a fight in weeks. I'm getting too old. No manager will take me. But I can't let Matt down. I've got to keep fighting until he gets through college. I owe him that for the way he's worked all these years. Finally, in desperation, Murdoch makes a fatal decision. Look, Murdoch, you're all washed up and you know it. The only guy who'll manage a has-been like you is the fixer. The fixer? I always swore to myself that I'd steer clear of a guy with his reputation. Uh, but now I've got no choice. I have to get a fight. 